I just share my screen also in the meanwhile till we just wait and you can let me know when to start. Y yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I get this. Uh... Yes, yeah, sir. Not sure. Are you able to see my screen with the presentation? Yes, sir. The one which says breaking yes. product plan, right? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. And I'm guessing you're able to see a full screen version of it. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you. So we'll start. We'll start now. A lot of people are watching it on YouTube live stream also. So oh, okay. cool. they are not able to join on Teams. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, go good afternoon or good evening, whatever. So it's fine. Yeah. So today we have with us Mr. Shethi Janand. He's uh, the Associate Vice President of Design at Paytm and he has also been a uh, st uh, alumni of IIT Guwahati. Uh, sir, uh, sir, no. Yeah, Is it, can we start? Yes, sir. Awesome, great. Uh, thank you so much, uh, IIT Guwahati Entrepreneurship Cell for inviting me. It's always a great pleasure to speak to students at IIT Guwahati. Um, in fact, I'm doing this after a long time. Uh, I used to do fairly regularly. I used to participate in Udgam, become a, a jury member. I used to do a lot of, you know, uh, become a visiting faculty from time to time. But then, you know, we got busy with so many other things. Uh, so it was kind of a welcome break to come back and, uh, uh, you know, like share some thoughts on product design. And uh, this is a topic which is really close to my heart. I believe it's... Um, something very essential because you know it's so exciting to be a product designer today right and uh, if you are interested in anything product uh, you have to be interested in product design even if you decide to become an you know product manager eventually you will be working with product design so it's always helpful to have a chance to you know understand more about product design what i will do is you know i'll share a little bit about my own journey into product design and design and just some trends about you know how the industry has evolved, uh, and then some key skill sets that I look for when we talk about managing, uh, becoming a product designer. Some key skill sets on that, uh, some key aspects over there, and then eventually also share some references that you should definitely go and try out, uh, which will help you to become a better product designer. And even we start, you know, getting into the domain of product design. And then I'm hoping we can do this for about 35 to 40 minutes. And then hopefully we'll have some time in the end, maybe like 10 to 15 minutes for question answers uh, if there are. All right, so I'm guessing that should be fine. Uh, great, so thank you so much once again for the introduction. Uh, currently, apart from you know working at Paytm, uh, I also run a nonprofit organization called Happy Horizons Trust. Uh, and I'm an investor and a founding partner at a small you know, uh, early stage investment firm called Karekeba Ventures. And we invest in early stage pre-revenue, but early stage startups, uh, mostly focused on areas which are you know non-metro city areas, right? So for a lot of focuses on, for example, Bihar, Jharkhand, Northeast, uh, Assam, uh, you know, Odisha, uh, and also from a lot of Telangana and other places as well. So we invest in mostly tech startups, but also sometimes we are open to doing uh, what you call non-tech startups as well. We feel that the business model is right. It is mostly post-revenue. So if you have a startup and if you have people who are doing startups who are in post revenue stage and would like to reach out to us for mentoring and you know also fundraising, uh, you can always uh, reach out to us as well, right? Uh, post my IIT Guwahati, I went and did my master's uh, from Indiana University in the US. And uh, I did my master's in interaction design also, right? Uh, I say also because Generally, people end up doing masters in something else. They end up doing an MBA or doing something else. But I've kind of stuck to design. And it's very interesting because my journey into design 
uh, happened purely by accident, right? Like uh, back in the days, I was in the JE 2001 batch. And uh, JE 2001 batch, I go to my day of my counseling. This is the days where we used to still have counseling in colleges. And I was in the IT Delhi campus where uh, I was, you know, going for my uh, counseling. And I saw that the only branch that was available was IT Guwahati Design and IIT Kharagpur Architecture, right? Uh, architecture, of course, I knew something about because, you know, architecture as a field had been pretty much out there for quite a few years, but not so much about design. So in a way, it was my leap of faith into design uh, back then with this basic conviction that, you know, if they opened up a branch in IIT, they must have thought something about it, right? It was purely as vague as that. And I had like no idea about what design was. And from there, like studying 2001 to 2005, when we graduated, to actually going and doing walk-in interviews um, in companies to kind of find a design job, to what I see today, where there is just so many opportunities as a product designer out there, right? So what I observed is that, you know, from the time when I got into design, where there was probably not much awareness about design in the country, the only awareness was about graphic design or advertising design. To today, where there is a lot of awareness in, let's say, technology design, in software design, in UX design, product design, and also other areas like service design and industrial design has also evolved a lot. So my journey has kind of evolved over the past uh, 20 years now. In fact, uh, this is exactly the time when my counseling was on 22nd June, I remember. So it's almost like 20 years since my leap of faith into the world of design. And uh, it's been a very interesting journey in which I have kind of, you know, worked at services company when I started with Infosys. Uh, then I went to the master, you know, master's where I worked with Motorola, which was a product company. Uh, then I came back to India, started my own consulting studio. Uh, then after that, I ran that for a year or a year and a half. Uh, then I basically joined a company where I was managing and setting up the design team. So I got a little bit more into design management side of things. Uh, and then I took a you know, couple of years to build a non-profit in design. Uh, and also teach a lot of design, right? So because I really enjoyed teaching and, you know, engaging with students in design. So I was teaching product design, graphic design, communication design, uh, space and interior design to people. And I realized that, you know, the more I taught, the more I understood that, you know, people are actually liking it in terms of what design is and what design can do for the country today, right? And a lot of people today, if you look at the country, uh, there are so many colleges, so many programs out there which emphasize on design, right? Uh, today, of course, after my uh, after working as a consultant as independent, then I joined 1MG. Uh, I used to head UX at 1MG before uh, I joined Paytm. I joined Paytm sometime in March last year. And since then, I've been with Paytm. And inside Paytm, I look at um, the merchant ecosystem, which is Paytm for business and all your merchant dashboards, all the products and solutions we built for them. I also look at design operations and I also look at design research. So those are my key verticals that I look at uh, at uh, Paytm. So I've had a very wide, you know, journey in the world of design, almost done like almost everything that you can think of in design. And I really enjoyed that journey and I feel much more, you know, <clears throat> responsibility to actually share what I know about design with people and audiences uh, like you as well. So let me just start with a quick, uh, you know, uh, couple of things that I feel is very essential for us to, you know, set the background context, right? Um, I have always believed that there have been three evolutions in India which if you are interested in product design, you cannot afford to miss, right? And three very major evolutions. Uh, the first one, I feel that, you know, the evolution of India as a product nation, right? Earlier, it used to be mostly services. If you look at the works of, let's say, Infosys, TCS, Accenture, you know, um, Bipro, uh, Cognizant, they were all the IT bellwort, you know, the, the, uh, the stalwarts of IT industry. And all of them were primarily services driven, right? So they would have a client, they would go and pitch the project to the client, and the client would give the project, it could be a maintenance project, a new project, a development project, but it was always a service driven model where you're designing products for somebody. But when you look at the country today, today we are a much, much more evolved as a product nation where we have so much products that are being built for the country by and large, right? And irrespective of the domain you take, whether it's consumer tech, whether it's health tech, whether it's fintech, whether it's, uh, you know, education, ed tech, whether it's, you know, travel and tourism, whether it's, uh, um, you know, like um, restaurant business, anything that you see, there is a lot and a lot of 
products that are being built for the country and also being built for abroad audiences as well right so the first most important trend is that of the evolution of india as a product nation right the second trend that i always uh, think is kind of very essential for my own work is the whole evolution of design in india as i had said earlier as well we started off when i joined iit guwahati in 2001 not a single branch had passed out in the discipline of design so almost everybody who were in the program four years first year second year third year four year fourth year none of us knew how design is going to play out what would be our career options so people would ask us that uh, okay you are studying design in iit guwahati first of all people used to really doubt whether there was a guwahati there was an iit in guwahati itself uh, and then secondly people would really uh, ask us what are you studying and then we would say i'm studying design and they would like really look at us very skeptically that oh are you sure there's a iit in guwahati and are you sure there's a design program because generally iits don't have design programs right uh, so it is very difficult for us to convince them and then they would ask us okay what is design like do you do fashion design like do you do like you know what kind of design do you do because for a lot of people still today the notion of design is all about fashion design right so it was a very you know difficult times early days but today of course it has evolved considerably we have a lot of Uh, examples of how design has played a huge role in the country's uh, evolution of products if you look at products like for example there's clear trip there's you know like uh, zomato there's swiggy there is you know uh, paytm for example uh, it has evolved a lot in tech side and also the non tech side also it has evolved other way of also looking at the evolution of design in india is to look at the evolution of the number of design colleges that are out there like almost every state now has one or two design colleges and we still think that it is being under served the it is under serving the population in terms of how much demand for good design colleges are there right and because the colleges have a limited capacity right so not everybody can get into those colleges so a lot of people actually start doing self learning as well and the self learning bit you will hear me again and again because that is another thing which has really rocketed the evolution of design in india because a lot of people do self learning Uh, whether you're interested in product or whether you're interested in design or whether you're interested in product management a lot of people do a lot of self learning and because of which what has happened is there is a huge evolution of design in india as well the third evolution that i have seen is very critical for our understanding which is what you know i think one of the visions of entrepreneurship cell at iit guwahati is also to look at the driving entrepreneurship and startups amongst the student community i think this has also evolved a lot like when we were there in college we didn't have any entrepreneurship cell right there was no you know startup fund there was no startup india there was no your story there was no like you know media house we talked about startup startup was never heard of right the tradition was you get into a college uh, you get to finish your job you sit for placements probably out of a batch five or six people at the max would start up rest everybody would you know sit for placements right whereas today that has changed considerably i'm sure a lot of people in the audiences Uh, would be actually you know um, thinking about starting up because the environment has evolved for startups and entrepreneurship in the country almost every um, major college in india has an entrepreneurship cell the government has been pushing a lot of funds for start through startup india to those innovation centers saying that you know you should open up there are a lot of accelerators there are a lot of incubators now almost every college has an incubation cell where they actually encourage people to you know build more startups and because most of these are located and hosted at uh, you know engineering colleges like you know technology universities like ours uh, there is a huge chance of it being a tech product that is being actually uh, you know uh, that is actually uh, uh, comes out at the end of the day right and so these three evolution first being india overall as a product nation going from services to product secondly evolution of design from no design to design being very critical and the third the whole notion of entrepreneurship in startups which is becoming very very popular in the country as well so one of the question that i often ask people right and maybe you know if you have a chat window open you can just tap in your chat window uh, maybe i can see that as well uh, or if anybody wants to just answer uh, what is design right what comes to your mind if i mention the word design what is design what comes to your mind like anybody can you can just uh, type in your chat window as well i cannot see the chat window uh, but yeah i can maybe somebody can read it out as well what is design what comes to your mind we'll just pause for like 2 3 minutes and we'll hear people's views and then we can take it from there anybody
Yeah, Ayusha, not able to see the chat window. Uh, one second. Or maybe on YouTube Live also it might be there. But anyway, so one of the questions yeah. I often ask a lot of people is, uh, what is design? And I've always, you know, been amazed by the responses that I get because that itself has evolved so much, right? So if you ask me the question of what is design, maybe 20 years ago, um, it would be something different. If you ask me today, it is something different. If you asked me 10 days ago, it was actually very different. So I used to think about design being all about problem solving, but then off late, I believe that design is about problem solving and making things look good as well. Because you know, if you make something which is good design, but it's not looking good, people are actually not going to buy it. So the aesthetic value also becomes very essential for good design, right? So that is something which uh, uh, I believe that whenever you get an opportunity, you should ask this question, specifically if you're interested in the world of design as to what is design and what is your understanding of design. And that understanding can actually evolve over the years, right? The more you work in design, the more that understanding evolves, all right? So I personally believe that uh, design is a really powerful tool. Uh, design actually creates cultures, right? If you look at your world around you, right? Uh, almost every product that you can see is actually designed, you know, right from the poster to this presentation, to the phones that you use, to the dress that you wear, to the food that you eat, to the utensils that comes in, to the delivery services, to the glasses we wear, to, you know, the cars we access, to um, you know the flights that we take, to the malls that we go, design is everywhere, right? And whatever opportunities to access these products that we have, that basically creates the culture around us, right? So if in a culture we have, let's say, too many fast flying cars, our culture evolves around fast flying cars. If we have a culture around, let's say, only bullet carts, then our culture evolves around bullet cars. So the design really creates that culture, right? Now, very interesting, culture actually shapes our values, right? So if you look at, for example, a country like China or a country like US or a country like India, three starkingly different cultures. Each culture is driven by the different kind of design that it has access to. And as a result, the values of that culture is get shaped by the design that we have. And your values actually determine the future. So in a way, Design is actually determining the future. And that, the day you realize this, is such an empowering feeling that, you know, design has this ability to impact the future. Whatever you create is going to impact the future because people are going to use it. And once people start using it, their values are going to get evolved. The values evolve means their whole culture also changes, right? So your potential to actually create an impact in society is so much more powerful, right? Uh, I believe that, you know, when you look at the world of products, there is a first product design, there's product management, there's product development, there's product analytics. We will talk a little bit about product design because I'm sure like, you know, as a part of the series, you know, you will be covered other, you'll be covering other areas, but we'll focus a little bit purely on the product design aspect into it. Like how do you really get into product design, right? Um, I did a quick trend search on, you know, like product management and product design, right? It's almost neck to neck where you can see you know, it has just been constantly people keep finding uh, product design and product uh, management. Uh, product management also has evolved over the years. It has, you know, people have kind of, you know, um, got more interested in product management. A uh, similar product design also people have got really interested in, right? If you look at design thinking as a trend also, you know, we have seen uh, people evolving. It has kind of, you know, remained of interest to people. Uh, but not so much as product management because product management has really taken the world by storm and almost every major business school in the world is talking about product management over almost every major company out there is talking about uh, product management as well, right? And if you add UX, you know, user experience is something which used to be very popular, but off late, it is kind of coming down because product design is kind of coming up, right? So a lot of people are talking about product design and product management as a result you know, a lot of your, um, uh, you know, UX trend is uh, coming down. But then having said that, I do feel that UX is still very strong. So anybody who's interested in product design should understand that UX is very critical for your, uh, you know, uh, growth as a product design person. And then the reason why, you know, we see this kind of a growth charts is that there is this immense digital transformation that's happening in our country, right? From the government, you know, asking to go digital India, almost every services, we are going from services to product economy. 
you know, from no design to design being an integral part of our work today. Today, I don't know of any major company out there which does not have a dedicated design team, right? Almost every major company has a dedicated design team, right? Earlier, we used to have more mostly legacy products, and everybody is now talking about modern products. Right? So everybody is talking about a you know better income tax website, a better you know passport navigation system, a better you know food booking system, a better system for you know uh, tracking your insurance. So there's a better demand and a need for better these things to come up in the modern products, and that's a story that we are also witnessing in our in our journey of the country as well. Similarly, earlier it used to be also about designing for India. but now you can see a lot of interesting company designing for the world for example if you look at company like uh, fresh desk right or if you look at company like uh, zoho which are actually designing for the world because now their products are being sold not just in india but also in the world in fact same thing with paytm also we also trying to see how our products can be used across different countries as well so that whole digital transformation story of india about we using our own products but at the same time also designing products for an outside audience is also become very essential into our uh, uh, development stories right so i would like to focus upon three main areas as to you know how to what do you need to keep in mind when you want to get into product design uh, the first is the knowledge bit uh, the second which i think is essential is your skill set bit and the third is your the mindset bit right uh, and we'll go deeper into each of them uh, knowledge skill set and mindset right so knowledge is the easiest the reason being that there is so much content out there there is so much information out there it is easiest to consume the knowledge because it's out there you know you have youtube channels you have uh, uh, you know like uh, blogs you have you know like uh, uh, brochures available booklets available free books available pdfs available um, you have these kind of sessions available uh, you can attend these sessions you can attend boot camps knowledge is kind of very easiest to consume right the availability is there it can get a little bit you know uh, confusing as to what you want to go for for but then what is important is that the knowledge is out there earlier the knowledge is also not there right so it was difficult for us for us to get any knowledge we had to actually go to the library find information you know go through books then come up with knowledge for that particular aspect but today it's easy to find the knowledge second part is the skill set which is slightly difficult because it takes practice and sometimes because of that it is intimidating at first where people feel a little bit scared about the skill set part or oh, i have to learn a new software or maybe i'll have to you know pick up these multiple tools etc etc the mindset bit i feel is the most time consuming and hence it's slightly difficult right but having said that if you have the right amount of knowledge and you kind of practice the skill set again and again i don't see a reason why the mindset cannot be developed right so always remember that the mindset gets developed over a period of time right so you may consume the knowledge immediately you can start to practice that knowledge but when you do it again and again and again that is when you know that the mindset of a designer also gets evolved and for anybody like when i do so i do a lot of hiring at paytm as well and even with previous companies but also with paytm i do a lot of hiring where i try to check for all of these things if somebody is coming from a purely very high amount of knowledge theoretical knowledge but doesn't have the skill set it's going to be very difficult for me to hire that person similarly if someone has you know good knowledge and good skill set but doesn't have the mindset towards design it becomes very difficult for me to really you know convince that person to get to onto my team as well so when you talk about knowledge right first and foremost you need to question as to why do you need the knowledge right what do you need the knowledge and where do you get it from okay um there a same knowledge can be got from multiple sources you can read a book about let's say you know um affordance or you could you know see a youtube video about affordance or you could go and talk to somebody who is in the design industry about affordance right so you can get the same knowledge from different sources but what you need to understand is the why do you need the knowledge about affordance in the first place right why is it essential right then in order to answer that why what do you need do you need to basically you know see examples of it do you need to see videos of it do you need to talk to people what do you need to do about it right so the knowledge is essential and knowledge can be of different kinds right so there you could have knowledge about psychology which is essential probably the most essential knowledge that you should try to pick up is to understand the psychology of users and of businesses so when you talk about psychology of users because design is always about uh, 
and design is always about problem solving and it's always about uh, you know um, uh, it is always about um, uh, making sure that you understand the psychology of users making sure that what users want and why they want you're trying to design for that right uh, and then also to understand the psychology of business more often than not what we do as product designers is we tend to think only about the users but then hey there is a business also that needs to survive there is a business that needs to make its money that is a business that needs to make sure that we uh, you know uh, uh, there is a there's, there's a revenue generation happening so you have to understand the psychology of business as well then you need to pick up some knowledge about design which is knowledge about the design history design theory and design trends again even if you are let's say on dribble if you go to pinterest if you go to you know a lot of these popular sites portfolio sites beyonds uh, you can get a lot of information about the design trends right now it is essential because it is important for you to keep yourself up to date with design trends and also the historical aspect of design right as to like what was it that resulted in why did this particular trend result right and what is the theory behind it so if you have some you know time you should definitely go and try to spend a uh, majority of the people that i review, that i speak to as uh, you know uh, uh, participants when they apply for jobs they don't focus upon design history or they don't talk about design theory they would talk about design trends uh, and they would show their skill set right it becomes very difficult to justify your value as a candidate because then you're not really getting into that uh, the other part as i said also is very very essential is the art aspect the visual appeal of your product that you're trying to build how appealing it's going to be how you know uh, good looking it's going to be how aesthetic it's going to be because matlab i mean it's as simple as this right if you have a product which is really good functionally but doesn't really look good people are going to have a problem in you know purchasing it or people will not want to you know use it right so it's important for us to you know uh, uh, keep that visual appeal uh, thing in mind as well having said that it has to still be functional and of course last but not the least since you all are probably and guessing the most of the audience is from the technology background uh, there will be people who would let's say uh, have a keen interest in technology because a lot of the products that we think about come from a technology framework right we start with the technology and say that okay, this is a technology that we have developed can we use that to kind of create a certain product um, uh, that we feel is going to be essential for us so here are some some interesting channels i don't know some of you may be subscribed already so subtrishi punit kings that they all like friends of mine uh, who have some amazing youtube channels right uh, subtrishi does really well in terms of explaining uh, product design from its ui perspective some really amazing ui uh, videos that he has punit talks a lot about ui and ux but at the same time also does a lot of figma tutorials uh king sidar also talks a lot about careers in startups you know uh, reviewing product portfolios and things like that some good good people like good friends of mine you can always you know uh, look at their youtube channel and you know uh, subscribe yourself uh, as you can see they have some really like punith has like some 72.5 1000 uh, uh, subscribers right and really uh, uh, been doing it for uh, quite some time there is a lot of content out there to review and access for free right so i think you know gone are the days where you have to actually rely on paid content only to actually get into product design right so i think you know it's always helpful to start with free content and then there is enough free content out there which can help you to getting started right from videos to uh, you know like uh, from videos to uh, blogs to articles um, to other things all right um, apart from that next comes the skill set right so when you talk about skill set i feel that you know as a designer this is your uh, what you call the uh, uh ram barn right like it's your like the most important thing in your uh, ability because you can have the theory part you can have the knowledge uh, but then if you're not able to bring that idea to life right uh, it becomes difficult for somebody to get convinced about your abilities and the ability to prototype either a low fidelity or a high fidelity prototype the ability to do visual thinking the ability to bring structure to some sort of chaos typically what will happen is a lot of product people come with a lot of chaos uh, and they are like okay this is an idea big idea that we have this is an ambiguous idea that we have can we bring some definitiveness to it right that's the skill set that you want to bring in uh, then of course there is an abstract to real part of it right so sometimes what happens your idea is very ideas are mostly abstract but a product is more real right so you can go from a purely abstract to a real uh, thing as well right <coughs> and i think as a designer if you can develop this ability to go from abstract to real from ambiguous to definite you become a very sought out after person that right? everybody wants to you know get after you because they know 
that when they come to you with a problem you will have a solution to it you know you'll have a definitive idea which can you know take things forward and that i think you know as a skill set it you could use different tools like figma is the tool which is being used in the industry most people use sketch people use adobe xd uh, and of course there's a lot of other tools out there i personally believe that you can actually do good prototyping even with simple things like pen and paper you can use let's say even uh, uh, tools like uh, you know there's balsamic for wireframing there is you know a lot of tools out there and we could do an entire session only on tools also if people are interested but um, uh, you know like purely from a uh, ability to prototype right that is a skill set that you need to develop right you may have a ability to so i for example i use a lot of paper sketches you know, i just whenever an idea comes to my mind whenever somebody comes to me with an idea the first thing that i do is i get into a discussion with that person sketch it out you know try to make sure that i understand and capture their thing properly what i've done in that process is i've actually brought a lot of a visual thinking into my uh, work and i've actually expressed it in front because now suddenly it has gone from pure chaos to some sort of a structure right and there is some more definitiveness to it and not something which is ambiguous and the moment that someone sees something in front of you it feels much much more real right so as a designer you should have that ability to bring something out to the real you can leverage any tools out there i used to do power i used to do my wireframes and design on powerpoint as well sometimes i still use powerpoint because i think it's such an easy tool to use uh, some i use a figma a lot in my work environment um, tools will come and go right but the ability the skill set to do these things are what is most important uh, for all of us the last part is of course about mindset uh, i believe that uh, you know this is really difficult to develop but it is not impossible i think over a period of time over a practice of time this gets developed and when you talk about designers mindset right so for example if you talk about design thinking when we talk about empathy as a way of life when we talk about the notion that we need to be human centered we need to be ensuring that whatever design we create is actually driven by the user's centeredness is there is always a user or a person in the center of my design solution so that i can think around that person right a mindset designer's mindset also is about embracing ambiguity because many times you know you end up in such a confusing situation uh, it may feel very intimidating and confusing at times right so that's where you know when you embrace that ambiguity you come up with those uh, uh, solutions uh, better as well it is also a lot about adopting divergent and convergent thinking so divergent converging divergent thinking is very simple that whenever you have an idea you explore and whenever you want to decide on a on a final choice you kind of converge right a very simple technique but i found it of immense value again and again specifically when you're looking at uh, you know like uh, uh, innovative ideas where you don't want to get fixated on just that one idea what we do naturally is whatever idea comes to our mind we immediately you know get onto the idea and start building it so what you've done is we stayed and started with convergent thinking and we remain with convergent thinking but if i were to diverge and i want to just explore what are the possible uh, areas of development which i can do what are the possible products that i can build uh, spend some time in diverging and then once i have explored these options then i can always converge back thinking what that particular product is going to be right uh, i always believe that one of the other thing that designers should do very often uh, and if you are if you are uh, interested in product design also you should learn how to collaborate with other designers uh, trust me when i say this that there will always be a situation where you will get frustrated working in silos uh, best is to go and collaborate with other designers uh, whenever you get a chance i think it guwahati has a great design program uh, designers are pretty much available you know all everywhere uh, these days not very difficult to reach out and collaborate and get some feedback and get some guidance from them as well so to summarize there is knowledge part which i told you about the different aspects in knowledge uh, there is design knowledge there is you know design theory there is you know um, psychology there's business knowledge etc etc uh, there is the skill set part the ability to visualize and prototype uh, and then comes the mindset part which is the developing the designer's mindset right so i always believe that you know if you are a good product designer you have to have that sweet spot you know that sweet spot for a product is basically when you are able to understand the user needs when you are able to understand the business needs and when you are to understand the technology possibility of it right so what we say this is the user needs is more of the desirability business needs is more of the feasibility and the technology is basically the viability right so uh, or oh sorry technology is the feasibility and the business needs is the viability right to so making sure that any idea any product that you can think of 
if it can basically align with what the users need what the business need and what is possible to technologically any idea which comes under this intersection it's a guaranteed success obviously i won't say guaranteed 100% because there's always a lot of dependencies based on some other things that come into the picture but there will always be the notion that if you have thought about users needs if you have thought about business needs uh, and if you have really worked well with the product manager or with the product team or the technology team uh, there will be chances that the product is going to be successful more often than not when startups start right uh, and i have seen this again and again because i advise a lot of startups i go and talk to a lot of startups i you know give some consulting services to them as well from time to time uh, i have noticed that typically people start specifically when people come from you know colleges like iits and you know good engineering colleges uh, they start with a technology idea uh, then they work about in trying to define a business plan and then they think about the users need at the last but if you ask a designer they will say okay, let's talk about user needs first then we'll look at technology possibility then we'll think about the business plan if you ask a product manager they will start with the business plan they will then think about technology and then they will think about user at the last so it is always this you someone approaches the problem from one side but what is essential is that we need to make sure that we cover each of these areas for the product that we are building right the users needs the business needs as well as the technology possibility and technology feasibility i also feel that you know as a getting into product design uh, it is essential these days to get a mentor uh, these days you know getting a mentor is not that difficult uh, earlier it used to be difficult because there were not so many designers out there today like if you are on linkedin there are these two very popular uh, what do you, uh, very popular uh, uh, mentor platforms one is adplist.org and the other is rethinking ux uh, rethinking ux actually started by my friend mayur from who is currently heading design at uh, uh, mentra Uh, and adp list is by this guy uh, who is based out of singapore uh, and uh, uh, so amazing the idea being that you know a lot of people who are interested in design can get a mentor and mentor who can guide you right they can guide you through careers in design they can guide you through notions about uh, you know how 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 you go about doing product design how do you go about planning a career how do you go about finding a project uh, how do you go about you know upskilling yourself uh, there's so many things that you can really uh, think about when you talk about uh, design as well one other advice that i often give to a lot of people and we are kind of you know coming to the close uh, of this as well uh, is to really participate in a lot of product hackathons and competitions right uh, i think within colleges there are so many of these hackathons that are held just participate in them because the more you participate the more better you become a product design the more better your product thinking becomes the more you start thinking about user needs the more you start thinking about business needs the more you start thinking about technology feasibilities and things like that so the more you participate this is one platform called open ideo i don't know if you're familiar or not but they have some amazing uh, what you call uh, uh, challenges that they keep uh, putting out there uh, people can you know participate so recently they had a lot of challenges on covid uh, they have a challenge on education they have challenges on fintech financial inclusion um, and then if you can look at the sustainable development goals which are developed by un uh, that also gives you a lot of interesting insight as to how you can design products in any of these uh, uh, verticals right so participate whenever you get a chance participate in product hackathons and competitions so that you know the more you participate the better you get with your skill set the better you get with your knowledge and understanding and of course your mindset also uh, keeps evolving right when we talk about any product uh, i kind of look at it in two verticals uh, two axes one is the functional aspect and other is the non attractive uh, uh, attractiveness or the aesthetic uh, uh, access right now in the ideal scenario we would want all our products to be in this right something which is functional highly functional at the same time which is very attractive right which looks really good but i am pretty sure that when we look into your own lives right there will be products which fall under this category this category as well as this category many times products which are you know just started off without any user needs without any business needs in mind they will be non functional non attractive just for the sake of doing it they'll create something and you know put it out there sometimes which is purely functional Uh, when you know that you have a good technology in mind may not have you know thought in terms of the visual appeal to it so it will be functional but probably not attractive something which is attractive and non functional again a lot of times when we make things with a lot of glitter and glamour it becomes very attractive to look but then sometimes it, it's non functional and this is something not just limited to software and ux products or technology products you can see this even in your household products so example for example if you are looking at let's say uh, 
uh, electronic appliances, right? Washing machines from, you know, dishwashers to your vacuum cleaners uh, or telephones in your houses or even other products in your houses. You can find that, you know, which area that they fall into. As a person who is interested in product, I always say that you should remember the functional aspect of the product and the attractive quotient of a product. And right? these two axes on which you should always try to evaluate a product. Where does it fit? You know, something which is highly functional and highly attractive would be probably here. Something which is non-attractive, non-functional would be somewhere here, right? How do you make sure that your product, which quadrant that they fit into and what is essential for your product success? So just to summarize real quickly, right? Like um, I want to understand, you know, product design from the supply demand situation, right? And I try to like to define it in the four eras of design in India. And uh, when you look at, let's say, era one, right? The first era where there were very few designers. In fact, only NID and IIT Guwahati and uh, uh, NID, actually first only NID existed. Then there was NID and IDC got uh, started. And then after NID, IDC, the IIT Guwahati's BDS program got started. So there were very few designers. In fact, designers were not mostly getting jobs. Designers were mostly running their own studios. Right? So there are very few jobs. In fact, even when we graduated, I remember I have I did walk-in interviews for almost like uh, uh, two to three months. For three months, I was doing walk-in interviews just trying to find a job for myself. Those were the days, 2005, 4, 5, where it was very difficult to find a design job and the number of designers were also very less. Uh, then came the era where, you know, some designers started happening because a lot of universities started shaping up some, uh, you know, uh, design programs. Uh, but design was still, you know, like less, but it was kind of growing slowly, slowly. But the designers certainly started growing because more companies, uh, more organizations started thinking that designers are needed. So what they did was within their own organization, they started creating people into design roles. That somebody was, let's say, a product manager or a project manager started doing some design work as well. So designers started growing. Then came the era where design jobs started growing very rapidly, where, you know, that is where the era three is where we started shifting from a purely services to a product company also where more designers started coming into the, in, in, uh, into the ecosystem because design became essential more jobs were being created when more jobs were being created more people say that we want to become uh, designers right and today if you look at the era four which is where we have a lot more designers but at the same time we have a lot more jobs as well now here's a tricky situation right why do we have a lot more designers is because the entry barrier into design is so low you remember how I said you can actually pick up a lot of content from free from YouTube and from other places. So the entry barrier into design is so low that it's easy to become a designer, right? Now anybody can become a designer, but then what kind of a designer are you? Are you a designer who understands knowledge, skill sets, and mindsets all together? Are you a designer who does only knowledge but does not have the skill set or the mindset? Or you have only the mindset and skill set but don't have the theoretical knowledge? What kind of a designer are you? So despite the fact that there are a lot more designers and a lot more jobs, it is important to know that even though we are in that golden era of design right now, how you stand out and make a difference is up to you entirely, right? Now it is essential to say that this golden era of design because I know of so many design opportunities, almost every company I speak to says that we have a requirement for designers, good designers. But then the problem that these companies say that it's very difficult to get good designers. We can get designers who are makeshift, you know, who have just done something and come out. But then how do you stand out and make yourself this really amazing person into design who can then make a difference into the organization, right? Uh, and overall into their own lives. So that is up to you because given the frameworks of knowledge, skill set, the mindset that I just shared, if we can follow those, you can trust me, you can really, really, really stand out and make a difference, right? And today, we need that thing in the environment, right? We need in the country, we need people who don't just get into design because I know how to make. So early in the days, if people knew how to use Photoshop, we would think, you know, they knew how to do design. Uh, or people, if they had a DSLR, we would think they knew how to, they were a photographer, right? Uh, today is the same thing. If people know, say a lot of people say, okay, I know how to use Figma, so I have become a designer. It's actually not the case, right? It can get you only so far. But then if you have to really make yourself, make your uh, break into the world of product design, it is essential to develop knowledge, it is essential to develop skill set, tools that you will be using, and also essential to develop the right mindset uh, towards um, uh, design as well, right? So, concludingly, we are in the golden era of design now. How you stand out and make a difference is up to you. And I think there is just 
way too many opportunities way too many avenues waiting to make that thing happen for you, you know, it's just waiting out there so that you can make a difference right so with that i'm just going to pause here uh, i will take questions we have about 10 minutes i can take a few questions i would request someone maybe uh, ayush or somebody can you can just read out the questions i cannot see the chat window um, yeah, yes, would, yeah and those are yes, my uh, contact uh, details uh, you can follow me in clubhouse linkedin as well as on twitter i'm at chitas on twitter i kind of i'm fairly active on twitter uh, linkedin as well i'm trying to get a hang of clubhouse uh, and that's my email id uh, I, I respond to emails also pretty fairly quickly. Uh, one open-ended question: I'm I'm kind of penning up a book right now called The Design Job. So if you'd be interested, you know, you can always just uh, send me an email um, on that as well, right? It's uh, it's um, uh, very easy to read about 10, 12 chapters on you know just how do you approach design job, getting into breaking into the product design industry, right? So kind of using my 20 years of experience in design to um, uh, put that into a form of a book, which probably would be helpful to people who want to get into product design. So yeah, uh, open for questions. Uh, yeah, uh, if anybody wants to ask question, they can raise their hands. No questions. Anybody on the chat window? I'm not able to see. Yeah, Sham. Sham, you can speak. So hello, sir. Uh, like as you said, that uh, startups keep startups and entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem keeps evolving in India. So mm -hmm. like, what do you see in startups before funding them? And like, uh, why is uh, venture capitalist industry now focusing more on early stage startups? As you say. Right. Okay. So uh, two questions there. Um, first, I think you know, like, what do you see uh, different venture capitalist uh, firms, right? will have a different way of looking at how to fund a startup, right? So for example, uh, some, for example, are able to fund at a, actually, you know, venture capitalist firm comes later on. Before even, you know, you get to venture capital, there is, you know, like angel investment, there is seed investment, then comes venture venture capital money, right? So venture capital money actually comes at a much later stage. Uh, before you have, before that you have seed investment and much before that you have angel investment and much before angel investment, you have friends and family, right? So your own personal fund, your own friends and family that you use to kind of, you know, uh, thing. I think that every company has a different way of looking at uh, how they invest in companies. Some kind of pay emphasis on the founders. In fact, actually everybody pay emphasis on the founders. Some are really excited about the idea itself. Some are excited, some actually fund you only when you have, let's say, got revenue stage. Uh, some actually uh, are, are willing to take the bet. Because see, for a lot of companies also, uh, 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 startup funding is a, is a risk that they're taking, right? So for them to take that risk about uh, what your company is going to do uh, and that they will be profitable in, in whatever X amount of time, uh, they want to make sure that you know the team is right, they want to make sure that the idea is proper, that it can last for four or five years. Uh, they also try to look at you know how much time the team will get, how much time it will take for them to become profitable because only then they can make money on, their, on your product and things like that. So there are multiple factors that you know contribute to that um, out there, right? Uh, what was the second question? I forgot, sorry. Yeah, so like uh, second question was like you already answered it in the answer. Uh, I was basically like uh, asking that uh, I have seen uh, like many investors are now focusing more on early stage startups. So right. Yeah. 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 So so the reason why you know why why a lot of people are focusing on early stage is that you know uh, early what used to happen earlier what used to happen was people used to start and because they would not get enough traction they would lose out and they would you know shut down. So even though um, now the fact that you know there are more avenues where people can reach out for funding, so it helps people to you know feel a little bit more comfortable saying that yes we want to take that risk. So what that has happened is the rise of early stage startup funding has actually increased the risk appetite of people in the country. So now people are more willing to take that risk, more willing to say okay let me try it for one year or two year. Uh, I can get a part of an accelerator program, become part of an incubation center. Uh, get my startup to, you know, uh, what do you call, uh, get some basic funding, get some grant funding, try it out. By the time that grant finishes, the product could be ready and I could be ready for more funding. So the channels have been created, which used to not be the case earlier on. So that has resulted in overall that evolution of startups in country, uh, evolution of entrepreneurship and uh, startups in the country. Yeah, next question. Uh, next question is asked by Sham. Uh, what analytics uh, tools and KPI do you use uh, to evaluate product design? 
Oh, so again, um, it's a little bit uh, complicated. I think you know different companies use different analytics. Um, so, for example, we use uh, a tool called Pulse, uh, which is an internal tool. Then we use Google Analytics also for a while. Uh, what is important is you first you have to define those KPIs, right? And where you define KPIs, you actually sit together with the product manager, uh, and the product manager and the design team basically sits together and define this KPI, saying that you know, this is a metric that we're going to track. Uh, and then based on that metric, then you go and, you know, set up your uh, you know, analytics uh, uh, tools as well. So um, there is no like, you know, standardized that, you know, in every product we have to do this thing. Sometimes, for example, you might want to track drop off rates. Sometimes you might want to track, let's say, you know, uh, form, form, form filling. Sometimes you might form, sign up, you want to sign up rates, you want to track. Sometimes you might want to track, you know, the uh, task completion in terms of your uh, purchase product purchase made. So that, that depending on because how the, how the, let's say, um, you know, the, um, product manager defines their OKRs, right? Uh, the key results, how they define. Based on that, you also, you know, make sure that you have to, uh, you have to des design your um, uh, tracking and analytics. Next question is asked by Lihit. How useful are the design thing certifications? Uh, do they actually develop the designer mindset in us? Are the certificates highly valued in the job market? Uh, so honestly, certificates are not valued much nowadays, right? It used to be early days, uh, not much these days because they're just easy to get certificates and, you know, because the value of it has probably gone down. Right? That's the honest answer. Uh, in terms of the first question, I feel it's uh, essential to participate in a program where you can get a deeper understanding of what that design thinking is about, right? So, I mean, you can actually get that knowledge by just by watching 10 YouTube videos also. I mean, all the things explaining about design thinking, if you go to IDF website, if you go to YouTube, you will find almost everything that about design thinking which is out there on YouTube. So you can actually, from the learning perspective, you can get everything out there. The question comes, what do you do with that learning, right? Do you apply those learning to your product design or not? I think that is the critical part which we need to build. That I have learned it, but I'm going to start applying it. So for example, if you talked about empathy in design thinking and you're not using empathy in your work, uh, that's like, you know, doing injustice to what you have learned. So then whether you have a certificate or doesn't have a certificate doesn't matter. What, I am, what matters is what you're doing with that knowledge that you have gained. Next question is asked by Manav. Can you provide some examples of experience dealing with human-centered design at CD? Oh, I think, you know, like uh, if you look at any of the, for example, I'll give you a simple example. I don't know if you have, many of you have seen this or not. Uh, uh, how many of you have seen this Paytm sound box? Uh, you might have seen this, you know, in the when you go to the shops, right? Uh, when you make a Paytm payment, you hear a voice which says, you know, Paytm received 2200 rupees or like Paytm pe 200 rupees prapt hue, you get here this. That's a good example of how human-centered design actually worked there. Because what we actually did, we actually went and studied the environment of that merchant. You know, trying to understand that person's mindset, that person's behaviors, that person's challenges in that ecosystem. Took that inputs in our research and said, okay, based on this input, what is the product that can actually fit in here? And the challenges that we saw were the, the, every time the merchant had to get confirmation, they had to open his phone and check for confirmation. Many times what would happen that the, the, the people would actually fool them because many times servers would not send the SMS on time. So a lot of the challenges. So we empathized with the merchant. We brought that merchant as a centerpiece of our work. And we made sure that we you know, designed accordingly. And a simple solution, like a sound box, is all it does is actually tells you how much money you received after a payment has been made to you. So a simple example of that and how we use that to, uh, so basically what we did was the reason why it's called human-centered design is because the merchant was at the center of the design. We would, we knew that we were solving a problem for that merchant, right? And also for the customer. Well, even for the customer, the moment that, that voice notification starts, the customer knows and he can just walk off. He doesn't have to wait and actually, you know, like show him the, uh, the feedback on the phone saying that, uh, you know, your payment has been done, right? So simple things like that, which actually made a huge difference in a lot of customers. A lot of merchant shop that we visit, specifically if you are a busy shop, uh, it really is a, actually a game, game changer product out there. Uh, next question is asked by Sham again. Uh, how does the product role change from product designer to uh, associate VP of design? Oh, okay. So uh, product designer right now uh, is more individual centric role, IC role, where you're actually working in products. Uh, as an ADP of design, I am not doing much of product design these days. I manage teams that do product design. So I have a team of about 10 to 12 people that I manage. Uh, I also look at design operations. So uh, operations is a lot about managing design within teams. There's cross-functional team understanding, understanding of how, let's say, a design team would work with the product team, 
product team would, would how a design team would work with a technology team how do you do handovers of documents how do you do like you know how are these processes set up how do you manage you know resources well and things like that so i get a lot of my time which is so that my role is to ensure that the design efficiency of the whole team is really high right uh, and then i i also look at uh, design research uh, where again i don't do the research on the field myself but then i have a team that i manage so the more up the ladder you go the more managerial and the more people centric thing it becomes uh, i think more about you know up to senior design research, senior designer you can probably or up to even principal designer you can become a uh, what do you call a, an individual role where you actually work in product design i know a lot of people who don't want to become managers who want to still continue remaining a designer right that also perfectly fine you can actually become a senior principal designer uh, and continue to get you know grow as a individual uh, designer there as well individual contributor there as well uh so uh, would you like to share some uh, experiences of your at iit guwahati so my experiences what kind of experiences like we could go on talking for like hours and hours and hours there's a there's a, a club on clubhouse iit guwahati club on clubhouse if you guys are on clubhouse now that clubhouse is on android as well we actually host sessions every sunday evening uh, where we all alumni get together it's networking with alumni so i really encourage all of you to join that because uh, a lot of students join that also actually and get a chance to you know hear from alumni Uh, hear about those days. In fact, then it was funny because the last time I was the eldest in that room because uh, I was from 2005 batch and it was the I was the eldest. But yeah, I mean, like you know, our time. Uh, I think one of my biggest uh, learning at IIT Guwahati was that uh, it made me very entrepreneurial in nature because uh, back in the days, you know, whatever we wanted to start, we would just start it. Like for example, I started the photography club. Uh, I started the hockey team. I was part of the hockey team. Uh, we started the mountain training club because there was nobody else doing it and we wanted to do it so we went ahead and did it you know we kind of you know from in alchar and also we really like raised the bar we started getting models and all from outside we started getting you know a lot of amazing speech uh, you know what do you call uh, sponsors from outside so i think it was it was a lot about because this is the day time when there was just only i think two or three hostels were there and uh, there was no cricket ground there was no uh, we had to play in like Uh, I mean, we played where currently I think the coming hostel is that used to be a football ground, and uh, uh, yeah, that used to be a football ground, cricket ground. That was the only ground, right? And the ground was like this, like as you can see, it was on a, on an incline. So uh, uh, you know, you know, I mean, crazy days. We, our classes used to be held first year. The classes were held in actually the the transit complex, which is the technology innovation center right now, TIC. So we used to have classes there. Our alchar nights used to be held in that the gadha outside that we used to have our alchar pro nights over there. um so yeah and it used to be just water 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 everywhere so but yeah, i think those that's like a separate session all together we should plan maybe and that's a more like a clubhouse session we should definitely do that sometime yeah sure sure, sure. it was a, it was great having with uh, you with us here uh so if anybody having any question they can ask now or the session is over Yeah, so you can just drop me an email, right? Uh, if you're interested in the book, uh, right? You can just drop me an email, and I'll send you more details about it. Uh, and also, if there are any further questions or anything that I can be of help of, you know, getting into product design as a product manager or as a product designer, uh, just feel free to reach out to me. My email address is there. I'm also active on Twitter, so you can just follow me or you know, ping me there also. All right, great. Thank you so much, everyone, and uh, stay safe. Uh, get vaccinated whenever you get a chance. and uh, stay home and uh, all the best thank you so much thank you sir yeah, thanks bye